Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower as we look at another shelf here. We got shelf 4C and I tell you what's on the shelf and why. Uh, so first we're going to start here with Lost Valley. I'm really glad this game was reprinted by uh, Pandasars because the game itself, it's a sandbox game. You can do pretty much anything you want in the game, uh, panning for gold, blowing up mine for gold, hunting, fishing, buying a canoe to go down the river. Actions are very quick, very simple. It's a small game, uh, not a huge sandbox game, but I like it because it just feels so different than everything else that's out there. Next to it, we have another game that also feels quite different, Mega City Oceana. Mega City Oceana is a dexterity style game. It's actually based on a smaller Japanese game that originally came out, they kind of expanded it, where you're building buildings with blocks and just trying to build funky shapes on top of these buildings uh, to make them different levels, and then you push the buildings to become part of a folding complex. Mare Nostrum Empires is a reprinting of the original Mare Nostrum. So I kept the, the newer version here from Academy Games. Very well-known game, a trading game more than anything else. Got a little bit of an empire building aspect to it, but it has a lot of trading involved in it, and this version is really nice. Then we have Star Trek Catan. Now, Star Trek Catan is, well, I guess I could have put it on the same shelves as Catan, but I kind of, I don't know, just fit over on this shelf for whatever reason. Star Trek Catan is a, it's basically the base game of Catan using spaceships as roads, which is kind of weird, but it introduced powers to the game. Now, these powers were added in the 25th anniversary edition of Catan because they're that useful. I kept the game for that reason alone. Now, that being said, I don't know how long this will be in the library. I mean, because you got to like Star Trek for this one to work well. But you never know. Then we have two games next to each other, Clank and Clank in Space. Clank first. Clank, the deck-building game from Dire Wolf, where you are delving into a dungeon, uh, trying to get treasure and get out as fast as you can, or stay in there longer to get bigger treasure, but it might collapse around you. I have, I think, several expansions in this box. There's a lot of stuff for Clank, but it's pretty easy to add in and out. Clank in Space takes it to another level, having a modular board, having some more rules. I find that gamers, and I use that term in quotation marks, um, use prefer Clank in Space, while most people that I play games with prefer Clank. I... I think Clank in Space is technically a better game, but I find myself drawn to the simplicity of Clank myself. Next to that, we have Atlantis Rising. Atlantis Rising, an excellent um, cooperative game, and wow, do we have a gorgeous version of it. It's just beautiful, and um, yeah, if you come to our bar, you can want to play this, especially on our play mat. Last Aurora, I don't know a ton about this one. I know Z played it. He liked it a lot. I just saw some other people playing it in our group. They all really enjoyed it. Um, this is one of those games of the cool, you know, um, uh, Antarctica theme. I think it's post-apocalyptic. Again, I'm not quite sure on everything, but I know it's a good enough game that it needs to be in the library. Godspeed here from Pandasaurus. This one did not get as much love as I thought it might get in the past but it's a really terrific game it has great pieces it has a it's sort of a worker placement blind bidding auction or some mix of stuff in there but it all comes together in a really good way with really great components and i think a fun a fun theme then we have rise of tribes now i'm not a huge fan of rise of tribes as you can see from the review but that doesn't mean i don't think it's a good game my only disappointment is is that this is not a deluxe version of the game. I do need to upgrade that at some point because I think the pieces in a deluxe one are pretty nice. But that being said, a, a simple 4X is probably too strong of it. But even while I was not super you know, keen on the game, I realized that this is one of those cases where a lot of people really enjoyed it. Path of Light and Shadow. This is one that maybe by the time you're watching this, I will have played this. It's high on my docket to get played. I think that box seems like it's a little oversized, but I, I like the, the concept, the Path of Light and Shadow. 
um, the idea of different what paths you can take. The artwork's pretty neat. So this is a deck building game that I want to get to the table. Jin or Qian, I'm not pronouncing it probably correctly, but this is about all those statues, the terra, the terracotta army in China. It's a really cool game. It's very Euro-y as you are placing statues and painting statues with your colors. And there's a lot of cool things going on. I was pretty impressed with this game. It's very clinical in many ways, but it's, it's a solid game. Then we have one of the restoration game reprints, Conspiracy, the Solomon Gambit. This is a game in which you're trying to move a briefcase around and get it to your people, trying to figure out who everybody is. It's lighter, actually, than most of the games on the shelf, but it's a cool callback to the game that it's based on, and I think it plays pretty well and has a nice spy theme. The Taverns of Tethenthal, which was the, the follow-up to the very popular, you can see there's three copies of Quacks on my shelf. Well, this is the follow-up to that game. Only one copy of Taverns. Now, don't get me wrong. I think there's a lot of people who are fans of this game from Wolfgang Warsh. It is a deck builder, sort of, um, as you draw cards. I feel like this game plays itself a little bit. For me, I wasn't as interested in it. Um, and I played, there's a lot of modules. I, I tried it multiple times. I think it's, it's fine, but I do know there's a lot of people who enjoy it, and that's why it's in the library. On this particular shelf, I think my favorite is either the Clank Games or Lost Valley. Like I said, Lost Valley is that game that a lot of people haven't heard of, but it's definitely worth trying. What's your favorite game? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been looking at another shelf in the Dice Tower Library.